many of us who are beginning to awake within our consciousness. So within the research of things, first of all, you have to go to to explain or define to any other individual this term and why. Okay. Chris Love and Coconut Oil family, you know how we do at Melanated Empire. Give thanks, you know, for even being with us, for even, even sitting and watching this video. As you've done that, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please hit that subscribe button. You can also hit the notifications bell. So anytime we have a new video, it's coming right at you. So having said that, you already know, you know, it's the Hero Ma'at, our top scholar in St. Lucia for the time. Our last video was very fiery, you know, even in the comment section, we can see that a lot of people, it did resonate with them and we touched on a lot of levels that they find really, you know, um, some arguments that you've come through, check it, some arguments, but it's all about shedding the light, really, as we're going to do in this video. The title of this video being African or Aborigines, what are we really? Because while some of us may be of the realization that this indigenous wavelength has been hitting the Americas, especially North America, it seems to be trickling down in the islands, in the archipelago of the islands as well, especially St. Lucia. So a lot of people will subscribe to the fact that saying they are not African. Hmm? They are not African. And as a result, they are, they can say from creation or they are from the Americas. And as a result, do not want to subscribe to being an African. They even have something saying like, you know, if we consider ourselves African, how comes we alleviate? And in our view, that is just really arrogance talking there. So in light of this, this evening, the Honorable Hiru Maat will be having a short presentation, right, and a deliberation in regards to our origin as a people, especially us here in the Caribbean. So having said that, we're going to let the bedroom introduce himself again, as we always do at Melanchthon Empire. Go right through. Okay. Uncle Justin Eb, Gruhene for Hetepu, Wabet. Good night, great greetings, family. Um, uh, my name is Wasahi Rumaat from the White Lotus Temple in St. Lucia, Babono, where they practice the Kili and they called on Shangu. So, um, we tonight we're gonna be discussing um, the African origins of the Caribbean people. Um, the that we are not originally from the islands, but we were brought here in the transatlantic slave trade to serve, to replace the masses that were here, the Caribs, the Arawaks, the Taino or Kalinago, to replace these people who be killed off. So tonight I'm just gonna be going into some literature, uh, the whole narrative that people are trying to escape because the world, before you came, the world already had a narrative. There were things manifesting on the earth that we came and got here. And even though you were to be a person of a mixed lineage or a mixed race, although there's only one race really, the human race, but all these concepts, all these concepts have been forced upon us and we have to remain loyal to the true narrative of the world. And even though we are um, biracial people having the mix between the European and the African or the Indian and the African or Chinese and the African that you stay loyal to the roots of this world, civilization, where it was birthed, humanity, where it was birthed, so, in essence, the world has betrayed their mother. And right now, even the persons wearing the black badge of honor, 
are disrespecting their mother. And it is only because of the circumstances, the depravity, the degradation of our people that we have turned our backs, not only on Africa, on each other, on our history, on the ancestors, and life in itself. Because there must be development. You cannot say that you're indigenous and, and you're not loyal to anything. So having said that, well, I'm going to go ahead and ask you the very first question. Yeah. Your mind going through, right? Um, since a lot of them do not subscribe. Okay, first, I will think, why do you think that a lot of melanated individuals do not want to subscribe to being African? Is it because of the whole slavery and that they would have to classify themselves historically, the ancestors as slaves, and they don't want to be called slaves? Or why, why do you think this thing is in the atmosphere right now, that they don't want to subscribe to being called an African? Well, they say the root of all evil is not money, but ignorance. Ignorance. So these people are basically ignorant. And as you rightfully said, the, the place the world has put Africa in today, no one, no one well, thinking they're in the Western world of um, modernization and technology that they're ahead, but you're not ahead. In the, in the race of life, you're not ahead in the Western world. You're behind. Mm. So this false concept we have of success and being modern has made us think that our people who have been disadvantaged and disenfranchised for years, not only in the 16th century, before that, with the, the Arabs, and not only with the Arabs, before that, the Romans, the Greeks. So it's been 2,000, over 2,000 years that the black man does not know himself. Mm. Um, Wade Nobles, he says um, it's called Kizungu Zongu, tornadoes of the mind. So we have to adapt to a world that's wrote us out of history. I'm going to read a little piece, a little piece from the Hosea. It's the... It's a writing by um, Nefertiti. I show you a land torn up by turmoil. That which should not be has come to pass. People will take up weapons of war and the land will live in confusion. People will spill blood for bread and laugh out loud at pain and misery. And none will weep over death. Everyone's heart shall care only for him or herself. A person will sit with his or her back turned while one murders another. I show you the son and daughter as enemy, the brother and sister as foe, and the child slain mother and father. I show you the undermost turned to the uppermost. All this is prophecy long before the Bible and Isaiah and Jeremiah. Prophecy, this is what is going on today. We've turned our backs on the ancestors. We are not reminded of the people that died for us. So we forget. Mm. Okay, so I took some notes. Um, the notion the indigenous act, the, the um, angle they're coming from is that we were always here. We were always here. Yeah. When they and say here, when they say here, do they mean in the Caribbean or do they mean 
they what, mean the, Gulf generally or yeah. well they mean in the caribbean in the islands but how is that possible when the islands are, are as a result of submarine volcanoes that erupted we wasn't these islands wasn't here during the split up of the continent from mm -hmm. pangea as they call it yeah because the the um the persons who cross the streets of Beringia, the from Asia, these um, Asians, they, they have the, the holy books, and the holy books tell you where they came from. These, these are the times of the, the um, glaciers, the ice sheets, the Cordilleran, and they covered up North, 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 North America. And they now, came through that land bridge. But when they came, they were already dark-skinned people living there. So when you say the Asians, those are the first set of people that migrated out of Africa? The, the Asians first set of people out of Africa? Yeah, mm -hmm. because you no. said the Asians crossed the Bering Strait and went into mm -hmm. North America? Yes, North America from Asia. From so Asia. they... But they were not the first people in the Americas. The African was already here in the Americas. Mm. But to tell me you're original of this land, you must be able to show me its history. You must be able to show me at least the Homo erectus. You know, to show that you go that far back. But two so, things about that though. Two things about that though, Mahat. Um, how could a land which one of its climatic conditions being winter be the home of a melanated people? Ah, precisely. And the second thing is the Homo erectus, to me, according to science, the very first place or the origin of the Homo erectus and the Homo sapien as well is in Africa. So this doesn't really tie in. Precisely. So if, okay, you were there before the, the um, Asian, and you said, or the Mongol, Mongol Mongolian. Mon the Mongolian, you, that's it. You, you, you can say that, okay, you're, you're, you're the first hair. But we're the first everywhere. So if we're the first everywhere, then why don't we claim England? Hmm. Good point. Why we want to claim the islands that have no resources at all? Hmm? Claim, you can claim Africa is the richest place with all the resources. And they are waking up. We can see right now the African is waking up. The sleeping giant is awakening. Yeah. But how far back, how far back would they go to say, because some of them say that there was a time that they just started classifying Negro or black people as both, like both Indian and African as an Indian. As or an as Indian. Indian, as a Negro, or, yes. As yes. a black person. And they use that to justify the fact that we are basically not the same as an African. And we are stealing, they have stole, the Asian has, has stolen their culture. So how could someone steal your culture, even the way we speak? Because we have the English language. Wasal, Isia, Nuni Alotlang, Ugabale Dilang, Awe, Ugabale Dilang, Nuni Patwa, or Kuyol, so we have both English and we have Creole. Now in the Creole, you could see the African speech word framework is like putting the okay, you say you say give me this car or this chair. In Creole, we say Bamachesala. So we actually put in 
the adjective after the noun. And it's just like the Medu nature. Mm -hmm. It's just like all African languages. When the English language, the, the adjective comes before? Before, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, I, I believe years ago you highlighted to me um, those parallelisms in the language as well, because in, in um, Patwa, in Creole, when you would say, look, someone coming there, and you say, mi amun, mi amun ka yeah. Yeah. And amun, amun really yeah. is the unseen that goes back to, as you said, the Medu nature. It goes back to Kemetic science as well. Amun ra. Yeah. So mi amun yeah. ka mm -hmm. So we could see the yeah. correlation. I love that. Love that point. Yeah. Now that's linguistics. Mm -hmm. um, we also have to go back. We have to go back to the first Pan African Congress in London with Henry Sylvester Williams from Trinidad. You know, W. E. Du, w. E. Du Bois. Du Bois, yes. Um, we had our own representing from Saint Lucia, um, John Edward Quinlan. So we have, we always knew ourselves to be African. Toussaint, his grandfather, was an African prince. Mm. Toussaint Louverture from Haiti? Yes. Um, what's his name? Mackendal. Mackendal. Mackendal was the one the Europeans feared. He, he, they feared his magic hmm. and they said even when he burnt at the stick some saw a, a winged beast fly out of the fire and escape they wanted to know how he was able to just be killing killing Europeans one by one but one day they tortured one of his compatriots one of their servants and he gave the secret that he was using herbs, poisonous herbs, and giving it to the servants and the slaves to put it in the food of the European masters. And they found him and they killed him. That's he, in food and he was from West Africa. Mm. So he used so, food poisoning? Yeah, he used food poisoning. You know? So how far are they willing to go? How far back are they willing to go? Let's talk about, um, I think his name was Paul or John Coffey. He brought back persons from the Americas, brought them back to Africa, long before Marcus Garvey. Let's talk about Martin Delaney, who went and looked into Liberia, scouting for place to return back to Africa. So we always knew ourselves. We always knew who we were. And I really don't see how, because if you look at the fauna, if you look at like the yam, the sweet potato, or the cotton plantain, peanuts, tobacco, these are found both on West Africa and in the Americas. That's because we were traveling there from a long time, since Ramses the third. And then Mansa, remember Mansa Musa said his predecessor sent out two hundred ships to the Caribbean, to, to the Caribbean, to, yes, to the across the Atlantic. Mm -hmm. And one came back, yes, and he said he saw he saw or like a, it, it, it was a river in the middle of the ocean, and. The boats, all the other boats just disappeared and he didn't have the guts to go through so he turned around and he came back. Yes. And Abu Bakr, what he did, he organized 2,000 ships and 1,000 of supplies. No, 2,000 ships and 1,000 ships for supplies alone. And he left and he never came back. So that river, they say, in the Atlantic Ocean, that is basically the trade wind, the trade wind, the equatorial current. Yes, they call them, I think, the 
Canary winds. Canary winds. Yeah, they travel, I think, um, they happen, I think, um, in the winter and in the summer. And uh, the boats have a direct, they don't even have to use a, a compass. Las Casas said that in destruction of the Indies. You don't even have to use a, a compass. You and the currency take looking, you right through. Right through. Yeah. I think I read in an article in 2018 that a couple of fishermen of the coast of Ghana get caught, were caught in that same current, and within two weeks, they were basically in the Caribbean. In two weeks. Yeah. So and that just goes to show. This man, I think, is um, Mr. Um, Hayadal, Mr. Hayadal, a Norwegian who made the boat, uh, the Papyrai boat, and sailed across and reached Barbados. And he proved that the African could have easily done that trip. You know? So we have a lot of... Oh, let me see what I can... Let me just get some things. I'll read some. Um, let's read from the Maroons. A little clip from the Maroons of Jamaica by Mavis C. Campbell, a very nice book. Okay. Let's see. Some of the misconceptions that have become common currency are due to no doubt to the constant recourse to certain secondary sources that carry the contagion of inaccuracy and the neglect of primary source material, which unfortunately is not as accessible as the tertiary works. A most stubborn misconception held, even by some Maroons and other Jamaicans today, is that the Maroons are the descendants of the Arawak Indians. Some add in the mosquito or mosquito Indians to the hybrid situation one would expect without any evidence whatsoever. The mosquito Indian were in fact used by the British as mercenaries to fight the Maroons on different occasions, but there is no evidence to show that there was ever any friendly relationship between these two groups. And then it, let me see. So yeah, so it's saying here that there is a distinct difference between the Arawak Indian and the African, because they all say, they all describe them as having black straight hair, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. long black straight hair, high cheekbones, you know, slender built and not that strong. Because even the, even the conquistadors, when they got to the islands, they said, when, uh, Taino would hit them, it would feel like it's a lash from a child. They didn't know that, they didn't have that war spirit that the European had developed from years of fighting, you know? They didn't even know what's a sword. But I think um, it's Columbus who said when, he, when they got there, when they got to the islands, the natives would run and hold the sword and they would get cut. They never saw, seen a, a sharp blade like that before. You know? Now I'm going to read a little piece from the history of St. Lucia. Because a lot of us, we're talking about our history of St. Lucia. We never read the books about our history. That's page 30. The doom, of, uh, the doom of Amerindian society. Meanwhile, the Carib threat slowly faded away. How 1732 map mentions Kabe Carib, or the Carib's house, at Ans Mamuya, or Fort Orbe, you know there. But only as a curiosity, a remnant of antiquity. You read that in 1732. You're speaking of the Carib already as an antiquity. The census of 1730 recorded 17, they call them Sauvage Residence de l'Isle, the savage residence of the island. 
plus 20 savage 20 savages that's they're talking about the taino plus 20 savages making for a total of 37 caribs on the island that's 1730 okay in 1730 in the year 1730 1730 you have 37 caribs at the same time there were 100 white males bearing arms six white women two white girls of a marriageable marriageable age 33 married mulattresses free black um, or colored women 19 free black and colored girls 17 white children under the age of 12 74 children under the age of 12 born of free colored and black women 147 working slaves so it gives you it's like a census and it goes on to say that let me see this means that by 1730 the caribs of saint lucia had been decimated reduced to less than eight percent of the total population two years later that's 1732 they no longer even merited a separate entry but had literally been reduced to a footnote it it says there alas love il y a trois car cabe de carib contenant 12 homes et femmes so it says like they had three houses and 12 well it reads in the margin of the 1732 census at anslove there are three carib houses containing 12 men and women 1732. so in 1732 the carib population was already becoming uh, it was 12 it was 12 people okay. so how can you tell me because it goes on to say as a people by 1730 the carib had entered the genetic pool of african and european heritage so you're not Taino with a little bit of African. You're an African with maybe a little sprinkle of Taino blood, which has been watered down down the years. But then where is the origin of the Taino? The Taino are those same Asians, some of them mixed with the, the original African, the original african population that were there before them in the americas because remember vasco nunez said he saw them he saw them in the americas they You're were talking vasco, central... nunez, vasco nunez de balboa yes okay. he saw them in the americas in mexico they saw them in south south america they didn't see them in north america they showed them in they saw them in central and south america but he yeah. did say i remember him saying that when he saw them he thought he saw he thought he saw the ethiopians when he saw them in one of his articles so that's, what that's right. the resemblance. that's right that's it yeah so that's because watch for example the Merakut, the pyramids the temple of the sun temple of the moon this comes from an african culture this comes because if you go Asia, you cannot find this pyramid. And remember, they infused with the Africans and they had the Omlek or the Z people. Not all the statue heads found in the Americas of the Omleks are African. The Olmecs? Yeah, the Olmecs. The Olmecs, sorry. The Olmecs, not all of them are are african but you some mean, of them, you mean the, the giant heads, the yeah giant heads, the giant heads mm -hmm. the giant heads they found mm -hmm. but there are some definitely african and they even have the bridges at on the back the yes. yeah so you could see that it is our culture that we shared it wasn't strictly pure ours but it was a mixing of the two you know, uh, okay. I think the old mix heads were dated to 900 BC as well, so that should show you we have been here quite a time, really. Right, yeah, but 
Of course, we came yeah. from Africa. Yeah. 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 With the truth, the facts, we live, we don't